Alright guys, how's it going? Uh, this is the first of a couple of videos that I'll be putting out over the next couple of days, which is uh, going over Variation 3s for some of the characters that I've been playing and putting some time into over the last couple of days. Now the Variation 3 patch is officially live. Frost is probably the one that I've experimented the most with in terms of like trying to find tech and see kind of specifics about it because you know the only other character i was playing a lot more of is obviously kano with snakebite and stuff like that and i've used him a lot beforehand in like customs online whereas for me arctic anarchy frost is completely new right like n none of these moves i've really done anything with beyond kind of just looking at them and i've been playing a lot of this variation over the last couple of days just to try and figure out some stuff and I think it's got a lot of potential. It's definitely different. You're not looking at like the the, the 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 real damage that Ice Machine is doing or the kind of the setup of Frostbite. But it does have its place and hopefully I can kind of convince you as to why that is. Uh, it gets three moves. Uh, you get the Ice Auger which can be amplified. You get the Core Overload which can also be amplified. And you get the uh, Ice Quake which is effectively a dive kick in the air. I'll start off with Ice Quake because it's the, the simplest to talk about. I'm going to quickly turn on frame data so you can see what's going on. Um, this is a pretty much a dive kick that back forward four in the air will make you dive down to the ground like that. Obviously it does 8% damage. It does a nice little chunk. Uh, can be special cancelled into from your normal. So Jump Kick or uh, Jump Punch. And on block is always unsafe in the air. So if you do it in the air, it's always going to be unsafe. If you hit it really high up, it's going to be like upwards of, you know, plus 20 and above. And if you hit it low down on like their legs, you're going to be, uh, okay, well, no, that was, that was the, the ground version. And that's what I'm going to get to in a second. If you hit it low down, it's like just below minus 20, um, like minus 15, whatever. The short of it is if it hits in the air, it's going to be unsafe. It's more unsafe the higher up it hits, but it's always going to be unsafe. However, this move has a, an additional effect. If you do it out of range and it doesn't hit, she will glide along the floor and it will become a safe full screen advancing option at minus seven. It is minus seven, so your turn is definitely over. Like you're, you're not going to be doing this from full screen and consistently being able to like get a down one or something because it's minus seven, so be careful. But it is safe. Uh, this does go under projectiles as well. Um, if uh, I'm actually, I, I haven't tried it with his spear ch uh, chuck, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, let's see if I can go under his spear. Okay, no, I did it too early. Let's try the next one. I'm having him throw it way faster. There we go. God, this is like the weirdest projectile to test this against I've ever seen. I will show this because I know it works. I just haven't got the greatest dummy. There we go. Um, so it does go under projectiles relatively easily if you do the kind of off a short hop at a traditional time. It's not really something you can react to uh, because obviously you have to jump in the air. You have to do it airborne. Short hop does have startup frames. Um, but it does go under pretty much every high and even most mids as well like I've, I've done this and gone under Kano's um optical you know optic blast before and that's a mid projectile but that's ice quake uh it does have a brutality but hasn't got a crushing blow or anything uh the next move i want to talk about is uh what i think really is the beef of this variation um you probably think i'm about to talk about core overload but no it's the ice auger which is effectively this high projectile uh, this is, I think, the strongest move in this variation, and here is why. So, Frost overall does, like, her, her only real projectiles are, uh, the Core Discharge and the Cryo Stance. Both highs. Cryo Stance can, of course, be amplified to shoot some mid versions too. Does a tiny bit of chip damage. Um, Ice Auger is another high projectile. It goes a decent amount of distance and it has some travel time on it. Uh, can be amplified to shoot a second one. That is a mid projectile. Uh, but the big thing about Ice Auger is it it, it covers a lot of, of, of bases. So on hit, it normally just leaves him standing. And you can see the hit advantage is mental on this. If it hits from a distance, like, he's not going to move for a long time before you can. Um, from point blank, the, the least minus it can be is plus 9. Which is super good for a character like Frost. Where you hit any string without VAR, you're going to be plus 9. Uh, and on a hit, if you amplify it, it's going to launch them and you get uh, you get a follow-up. Which is, for the easiest one I found is just back one too. So, 
this does combo from every one of her buttons. So 1-3 is going to launch. 3-4-4 four, four is going to launch. 1-3 um, I, I, one, I showed already, right? One, I, I do it again just to show. 1-3. Yep, and back 1-2. So, uh, and even if for some reason you want to, back 3-2 as well. Even though you're not going to need to do that. Um, it's not going to get you as much damage as Ice Machine. But it does combo from everything just as well. Uh, the big thing about this as well is whereas Ice Machine only stuns people on the ground reliably, this will get people um, in the air too. So for example, if I if I hit this, for example, uh, you can go for back one, two, and then extend something that's launched in the air. If I get an anti-air, so if he does, this is probably the worst move in the game to test an anti-air against because how good it is, but you can do stuff like this. It means that you can extend damage on anti-airs and stuff uh, with... Uh, with a stun that you can't normally do an ice machine and um let me see if i can set him back to, to custom and the best thing about this move i think is how it changes your block game in the neutral so i'm gonna use her back to as an example here and i've been talking about this with my stream today but this really is i think the best example to show what this button can do so i'm gonna make him auto block <clears throat> so the auger if it connects from a, from point blank, let me do down one, Augur. Minus 10, right? Unsafe. If it connects from a distance, I'm actually going to have him block everything because this will be easier to show. The longer this travels, the more plus one block it's going to be. If they block this, it goes like the most I've seen is like plus 17. You know, I, this has been upwards of like plus 17 on block. Uh, the best thing about this is Frost's, um, Frost's back two is one of her like best neutral buttons by far you know 19 frame advancing by itself safe on block mid but the problem this button has is universally all the follow-ups are unsafe so what you do is in order of like priority and like highest reward for her from it these are the options that frost normally does you do back to two which can be flawless blocked you know there's a, there's a gap here if they flawless block the second hit you will die to it it's like the most basic of frost matchup knowledge everyone does this against her if you go for back two two and your opponent knows the matchup they're probably going to flawless block and you're probably going to die for it it is safe on block if it does get blocked but nine times out of ten against competitive players you're going to get flawless block you're going to lose some damage for it to counter that <clears throat> frost players because uh, this is obviously hit confirmable, so if this hits, you can turn it into a launch of your choice. But is the most likely to be counter of a flawless block. The next thing you see people do is back to into cryo stuns. Uh, Silver Simon, thank you for the four months, mate. Welcome back, my dude. Uh, but you next see people go for back to cryo stance, which is if they're trying to flawless block, this might catch them off guard. It's really unsafe normally. You see people try and go for like this into amplify. To make it a bit safer but fundamentally th this is not gonna catch people out if they again they can crouch it they can duck it uh i'll quickly show you what that looks like <coughs> excuse me so for example if, if frost goes for like this and that's a punish and that's like you know a slow forward two from Shao Kahn he's a big lad as well so it's more likely to hit him the first hit at close range will, will jail the second one never will if you're further away neither hit will so it's even easier to punish and if she amplifies it you can 1000% hit her in between and it's an easy punish so um the next thing you see frost players go for is or or like the third priority I would say is back to blade spin which on block, if you, if you get all the hits, is safe at minus four. But her fastest button is eight frames. So your turn is over. If they've got a nine frame mid, you've just started their offense for them blocking it. And from a distance, it doesn't even connect. It's going to whiff. Um, and then right at the bottom of the pile is just do this by itself. You know, it's, it's, it's the least reward. It's safe, but it doesn't really do much for you. On hit, it's kind of hard to jail follow-ups at times. And on block, it's, it is what it is. You know, it's minus four from a distance. You haven't really achieved a huge amount. This brings me to my point. Ice Auger is probably the best option out of any of the variations that she has on block. Because this into this, if it connects from any form of distance and they block it, is going to be plus. They can duck it. So if I make him duck, it is going to go over his head the same way the, the cryo stance does. But because of the travel time, 
it is so hard for them to stand up and punish you, they are more likely to get hit than any of the other options. And from close range, um, male characters are jailed into blocking it. So from close range, they have to block it anyway, and you're minus seven, you're safe. So from close range, this is a, a free check because they can't avoid it. It does whiff on females, so be careful about that. But what you can do against anyone is if you're going to spend that bar cryo stance style, amplify ice auger, and now you're safe from anything you do from this option because they're not going to be able to, to crouch that and then get in the way of that, and that's a safe button no matter where you do it once again the, the more travel time it has the more plus it can end up being um which means this is an option that they thoroughly have to respect and on hit you know if if, if they if they do something silly and get hit by it you get uh you know you you get a combo i'm just gonna do the i'm just gonna do the forward two just to because it's the easiest thing not a lot of damage off the forward two by itself but you can get other things instead if you want uh, but that gives you, you know, a really good option on hit or block from your best buttons. It worked from down four, same kind of idea. Um, you know, three, four, four. Uh, well, he's ducking, so I can't really show that off. Uh, anything on block into Amplify, I sort of is pretty much what I'm saying. There, there is a, a gap in between the normal and the Amplified. So if they know and they're looking for the Amplified, they can flawless block it. But if they're looking for the flawless block, then they're not going to punish just this by itself. It just gives you a bit more safety and a bit more options to do. And in the corner, uh, it's even better. Because in the corner, your opponent really is kind of stuck here. If you've kind of hit that sweet spot with Frost and you're kind of looking to keep them here, um, it's really hard for them to do to do stuff about this. Because if you keep like, you know, tip of down four range, auger range, back two range, this all becomes even better. And if you hit any of these in the corner, uh, like for example, say you hit this in the corner, um, you know, she does get really good options from it. You can go for like 2-2 two, two if I don't mess it up. Which I'm going to. Okay, my execution sucks, so bear with me. I'm just going to show this once. There you go. So you're not getting terrible damage for what is effectively a button um, off of like something like this. And you can get that confirm off anything, right? If you hit 3-4-4, four, four, you can use it. 1-3, um, same thing. Back 1-2, same thing. Pretty much the short of it, all I'm saying is if, if you hit them, you're going to be able to turn this into... I'm just going to do something way easier because I don't need optimals to, to, show, to showcase this. Um, the short of it is, you get a hit, you're going to get a combo. You get an anti year, you're going to get a combo. It gives you so much safety that you don't normally get off of most of your buttons. And because it's so plus with the travel time, if it if they do block it, you're obviously going to be able to get to move in. You can push your advantage. You can go for like dash down one, which is a safe button. Try and fish for more advantage. If you know they're going to sit there and block, you know, you can dash up throw. In the corner where you already have a lot of control here, right? If they jump, you can add the air. If they decide to stay there, down four and hit will get your offense started. Uh, down four on block, you can now threaten with something additionally. If that hits, it's plus a billion, so you can move in and even more. And with any frame advantage and close enough, you know, this, this is frost. With any advantage, you're looking at, you know, this for plus frames. You're looking at this for plus frames, um, which is plus if you get both hits, just to show off again. You know, that's going to be plus six if they block both. Um, you know, you're going to retain the plus five from this, which is going to give you your frame traps. All of this on top of something else that just keeps them there with mad hit advantage, mad block advantage. And that's just Ice Auger. Finally, the move she gets is Core Overload, which is this. Um, this by itself, when you activate it normally, all of her core moves, like Core Discharge, goes from 70 damage to 84. Sweep goes from 70 to uh, 84 as well. And 224 goes from 139 to uh, 161. You're only really going to use this normal version in matchups where you really need to use this. It really is the main reason I think you'll, you'll be going for this at all. Uh, but the real point of core overload, and that's new to this patch, is if you amplify this, after 7 seconds has passed, you will explode, deal um, 30 damage to yourself, but you'll freeze your opponent for a, a full combo. And that is the same freeze that you get in Ice Machine. So it's a freeze that we've all seen before. 
The downside to this move is that if you throw them, it turns itself off. So you can't throw them into being frozen. If they throw you, it turns itself off. And if you get hit, like if you take a hit and take damage, it will turn itself off. Um, it costs a bar to use. Um, and kind of my knee-jerk reaction to this was... It's probably not that good because it costs a bar. But the more I've experimented with it and the more I've used it, I see more potential in what this can do. Now, hear me out. The main thing about it is if I change my, my uh, refill behavior... Okay, normal, normal refill. So... It starts to come back. By the time it detonates, I have half the half of the bar I spent on it is back, which means that realistically, this this is only going to cost what uh, half a bar to use, because by the time it detonates, half the bar you spent on it is back. Um, this variation is only really going to be spend looking to spend bar on this and this. So, as long as you use this and retain a bar, you are still going to be able to go for, you know, whatever you want. To extend damage if you do get the hit. Or, you know, if you do have this activated and you get a hit and you confirm it into this. You have the option to... That's probably not, okay, it is enough. I didn't even think it would be. Um... The optimal follow-up is up to you. As long as you end with enough advantage, that's the main thing. But what I don't think this is mainly used for combos. Uh, the, core, the big thing about core overload is with this on, your opponent knows what's coming. It's either going to be they hit you and turn it off, they throw you and turn it off, or you throw them and turn it off, or they get hit and you're about to, you know, extend your damage beyond. The cool thing about core overload is with the neutral control you have with your down three to stop any kind of aerial attempt, um, ice quake to, you know, keep people honest when they're moving around. Um, and the main thing, the auger, you know, if, if this connects, they're going to be dealing with everything and constantly, you know, with you laying into them with the advantage. Core overload forces them to make a decision, right? When, when this is turned on, their neutral has to change. It has to, because with this constantly ticking, if it hits them or you get a hit and they're still in hit stun, it will freeze. Like, that is blockable as well. Remember, that is blockable, so they can block it. But if they block it, um, it means they're just going to sit there the whole time. And again, if, if this is, like, near the end, like, let's say this is near the end of its time and it begins to, to really go... Yeah, it turned itself off, but by the time this throw is ended, that they were looking to block because they can hear it going beep, 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 beep. They're like, okay, right, it's ending, so I'm just going to block now and wait for it to turn off. They eat the throw. By the time the throw is finished, uh, you have the bar back, right? You, 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 you regenerate that bar over time. Um, there is one thing about it that I want to show off. Uh, might take me a few tries because... It is very time independent. If you throw them right at the end. Okay, too late. If you throw them right at the end, you can freeze them. But it's very hard to set up. Okay, that, that's not the one. I will show this. It might take a few tries. Okay, a bit too early. A little bit too early. You really hear it start to beep fast. Okay, that wasn't the one. Okay, well, you're seeing how hard this is, right? Like, the, the, the point is, if you throw them right at the end of its time, they do get hit by guaranteed freeze. Okay, that was me trying it. I was like, frames off. But if you do it right, right, right at the end of the thro of the, the course time, you will throw them, the throw will begin, and then you'll blow up and, and freeze them. But it's really hard to set up. Like, if you're, if you're using this move and you can see yourself moving around and you can see them blocking... You can go for it, because even if you don't get the freeze at the end of it, it meant that you got 14% damage from it, right? Um, but generally speaking, that's that's how I see the move being used. I feel like this variation is, if you're if you're having serious issues from a distance, that's what Icequake is for. Like, if you're being hard zoned out, and this just isn't working for you, this just isn't working, and you want to stop them from just throwing projectiles all game, Icequake will get you in. Um, from medium distance... Ice Auger is going to be your best friend. Because this also has a crushing blow in it as well. So if you hit from maximum, maximum, maximum distance. 
uh, like that, it will crushing blow. Which, if you're in the corner, you can, I believe, you can actually combo an auger again itself. So if you hit it for max distance, okay, and you and you hit it. Let's try this. Okay, it does work. <clears throat> which again, th th that distance will be set up if you're like looking to harass for like the, pl the, the plus frames on it, and they get opened up, then you have an opportunity there for you know some cool damage. Uh, but from a medium distance, you're looking at Ice Auger, amplify it, make your back two scarier, make your back two more threatening, give you an option off of down four, perhaps. See that as long as it's had travel time, you're probably going to be plus, so you can afford to safely move in, try and harass with your back one. With this this 11 frame back one is going to be a lot scarier if they're constantly going to be at a disadvantage to you. Uh, you retain, of course, you're down three. You get more combo opportunities through Ice Auger that Ice Machine wouldn't normally freeze into. And core overload, in my opinion, serves its purpose to just force the opponent to do something. You turn it on and you and you see what they do. You don't do this and then immediately fish for, you know, the biggest combo you can. Even though you can, and, you know, if you do get a hit and you want to go for something like that, you do get some nice combos. But obviously it's scaling a lot because of the amplified spin. That kind of stuff can work, but I wouldn't recommend going for it straight away. Turn on the overload. Be patient, because remember, if this runs out and you haven't done anything, it costs you half a bar. If they begin to lay into you, you know, react accordingly. See what they do and play around it. And and that's what I think uh, that uh, Arctic Anarchy Frost is all about. Hopefully this kind of helps shed some light on uh, any of you out there that maybe weren't so sure what it can do. I will be putting up a lot more match footage over, over time, because I will be playing a lot of this variation. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.